CRC, we are waging a war against poverty. We are not going to look the other way when we see people who are hungry, hurting and suffering, which is why we are launching our CRC Restoration in Action campaign. Each term is going to focus on different needs in our communities and different resources can be donated. So keep an eye on our social media platforms and our CRC website for more information about these drives and dates. As we all know, the festive season is only a few weeks away and we have the opportunity to change the lives of those who need it the most during the special time of the year. By donating food parcels, sweet treats, toiletries and different sports balls like soccer balls, tennis balls, netball balls. 28th of November from 9 to 12 at a CRC location near you. Every CRC member is called into the Ministry of Reconciliation and when we alleviate pain and suffering caused by poverty, we place dignity back on those who need it the most. Every person matters to God. And today, on behalf of Pastor Art and Pastor Noretta, we want to thank you for your continued support and generosity in building God's kingdom. God bless. God bless. Yay. Welcome to CRC, the place to be. We want you to know that you are so important to us. And as CRC, we have gone the extra mile to make sure that you are safe and secure. Yes, Pastor Art and Pastor Noretta Borsov have truly gone above and beyond in implementing CRC COVID-19 protocols that are simply unmatched. Working together with leading protocol specialists, scientists, and medical doctors, They've implemented screening and sanitation programs to ensure your safety and peace of mind. Please remember that your safety is your responsibility. So if you do plan on visiting a local CRC, please adhere to the following protocols. Please make sure that you wear your mask at all times and that it covers both your mouth and your nose. Kindly sanitize at each of our sanitation points. Make sure to maintain a social distance of 1.5 meters at all times. And remember, although we're all excited to see one another, we cannot allow physical contact of any form. We cannot wait to welcome you back to our churches. And if you're not planted in a church yet, visit our website and get connected to a CRC location across the country. God is for you. It does not matter who's against you. It's a matter of time and you are going to get to the top and you are going to be able to change your world for other people in Jesus' name. Boys and girls, we are beyond excited to be with you guys once again yep. to bring the word, praise, worship and so much more. Scars went deep and I was all alone When I feel this void with things that took my soul You were there When darkness took a hold of my heart When fear gripped my soul and tore it apart
We need a new breed of Christian. We need a young person, a Daniel to arise. Oh, come on. Somebody that is sharp and smart, somebody that has no racial issues, somebody that is saturated by the love of God, but somebody that is bright, that is better, that lives unapologetic, somebody that loves God passionately, and somebody that loves their neighbor as they love themselves. And we are gonna make this country a crown jewel that will reach the nations of the world and bring glory to God. Come on, say amen, and amen, and amen, and amen, and amen, and give the Lord Jesus praise. Come on, because it's the right thing to do. Well, good morning, CRC. You heard our pastor this morning. We're going to give Jesus some praise right there on TBN, One Gospel, Facebook Live, YouTube, CRC Online, radio stations all over the world. Are you ready to make some noise for Jesus? Here we go. Hey. I'm not a victim. I have set my mind on you. There is no Your 
are waiting online to connect with you. God is able to meet you at your point of need. So if that is you, connect with us. We're going to continue to worship in Jesus' mighty name.
your hands the longer the wait the stronger I'll praise come on come on God is with us on the battleground say it again the longer the wait
I will praise you. Come on, you praise him this morning. You are in this place in front of your television. Turn your lounge, your living room into a sanctuary this morning. Come on, something is going to change. A sound is going to change this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise, 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 praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. In Jesus' name, welcome to TBN One Gospel, Facebook Live, YouTube, CRC Online radio stations. Uh, uh, correctional facilities, people all over the world, we welcome you with us this morning in Russia, Israel, America, uh, China, Africa, Europe. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Amen. Today, God is going to do something in your life and God is going to do something in your lounge, in your living room. You are not going to leave this w- the same way that you came in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? According to COVID regulations, we may only sing so long. So, uh, uh, you know, I pray that this COVID disappears so that we can have church back normal in the name of Jesus Christ. Take your uh, seats and open your Bibles right now to Psalm chapter 40 in the name of Jesus. Come on, A+++++. plus 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 plus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready this morning? Amen. Say, I'm ready to be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Say it this morning. Say, I am too blessed to be stressed any longer. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, right where you are in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm 40 verse 1, the Bible says, I waited and waited and waited some more, patiently knowing God would come through for me. Then at last, somebody say at last, he bent down and listened to my cry. He stooped down to lift me out of danger. From the desolate pit I was in, out of the muddy mess I had fallen into. Now he's lifted me up into a firm, secure place and steadied me while I walk upon his ascending path. Say, I'm recovering. Say 2021, a year of great restoration for myself, my family, for South Africa, and for Africa. If you believe it, give the Lord a mighty praise in the name of Jesus. Come on, brother. Come on. Hallelujah. So a new song for a new day rises in me. A new song for a new day rises in me. Every time I think about how he breaks through for me. Ecstatic praise pours out of my mouth until everyone hears how God has set me free. Many will see his miracles. I'm glad you are so happy. I said many will see his miracles in your life. They'll stand in awe of God and fall in love with him. Blessing after blessing comes to those who love and trust the Lord. They will not fall away. Every prodigal will come home. Every backslider will come home. Every couch potato will come home. Every comfortable Christian will come home. Every fearful Christian will come home. Everybody that thinks it's better to serve God in front of a television set are going to come home in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, if you're in front of your television this morning, just give the Lord a praise offering in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So he says, um, blessing after blessing comes to those who love and trust the Lord. They will not fall away for they refuse to listen to the lies of the proud. God will have the final say, not a new world order, not a politician, not some economic Marxist plan. 
God will have the final say for the nations of the earth. Every devil will come down and the name of Jesus will be exalted and we will see the greatest revival that this world has ever seen. Come on there on one gospel, there on TBN. Jump out of your chair and give the Lord a praise in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. So the lies of the proud will be exposed. Satan is defeated. And Jesus said of the increase of my kingdom, there shall be no end. Lord our God, no one can compare with you. Such wonderful works and miracles are all found with you. And you think of us all the time. Hallelujah. You're sitting in a prison, God thinks about you. You're going through a storm, God thinks about you. You're facing a hurt, God thinks about you. And God is thinking thoughts to bless you to deliver you, to uplift you in Jesus' name. He says, with countless expressions of love, far exceeding our expectations. So I believe that God wants to change our sound. So I need everybody around me wide awake and happy because um, music is going to be a key here this morning. He says, I, God is going to change the sound. When you study by the Bible, Always there's a prophecy and then there is a song of deliverance before deliverance actually manifests. I think we've been surrounded enough by songs of fear, by songs of COVID, by songs of depression, by songs of hopelessness, by songs of despair, by songs of uncertainty. It's time for a new sound, a sound of deliverance, a sound of blessing, a sound of revival, a sound of the rustling of the Lord in the mulberry trees, a sound where we know it is time for God to deliver His people. Shout Amen. No more will we listen to a bitter sound. No more will we be controlled by a bad sound. But we are trusting God for a new song because God promised us a new day in Jesus' name. So, my text this morning, not difficult to figure it out, a new song for a new day. Hallelujah. It means you're going to change your tune uh, 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 and you're going to change your melody. A new song for a new day. Happy rises up in me. Every time I think how he breaks through for me. But when I listen to the scientists, and when the scientists don't agree with the government, they get fired in any case. Oops. When the scientists say lockdown is not good for people emotionally, you say, Pastor, don't always say things that get you in trouble. No, I'm just going to say it as it is, okay? Um, because we need our people free. We need our people loose. We need South Africa back to business. We need people out of the bondage of fear, out of the shackles of oppression in Jesus' name. Our God is greater than COVID. Our God is greater than depression. Our God is greater than anger. Our God is greater than your pain. Our God is greater than your past. But God says a new sound is required if you want to see a new day. Come on, somebody, just jump on your feet. Give a little bit of a praise dance. Do whatever you can in front of your television set. It's time for those shackles of depression to come off. Those shackles of despair to come off. Those shackles of of loneliness to come off and to say a new sound for a new day. Come on, somebody shout a new day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Take your seat, okay? The New Living Translation says, He has given me a new song to sing. I don't want to talk about my pain for the next hundred years. I don't want to talk about apartheid for the next hundred years. I want to learn from the injustices of yesterday, but I want to focus on the promise that I have tomorrow. We need to teach our children a new song. We need a new song. South Africa, Nigeria, Church of Jesus Christ. A song of hope. A song of revival. A song of expectation. A song of deliverance. A song of the greatness of God. A song of the miracles of God. A song that nothing is impossible with God in Jesus' name. We don't need a song of fear. We don't need a song of division. We don't need cultural songs calling for war. <laughs> now the amen goes. You know, you follow a leader that, that, that stands for division. You better stop following that leader. 
Even if you have to change your color. I don't refer to anybody. Whether it's blue, green, red. <laughs> you know, the media gives some people more publicity than they should get. <clears throat> okay, let me leave it there because I'm getting some people mad. And I actually don't want a mad song, I want a glad song. Okay, so... We don't need songs of fear. <clears throat> we need songs of hope. We pray that our president, although he says things as, as it is, we want to hear about the future. We want to hear about a better South Africa. We want to hear about a country for all people where everybody can dream, where everybody can see a future, where everybody can see they have a part to play in building a beautiful South Africa for our children's children. Can I have an amen? We need songs and sounds of deliverance. Songs that inspire hope, songs of faith, songs that inspire courage, songs that inspire belief, songs that inspire optimism, songs that inspire love, songs that inspire praise, songs that magnify God. We need to think about the goodness and the mercy of God when we find ourselves on the battleground like Jehoshaphat, when the odds are too numerous, when we don't know what to do, we have to position ourselves before the throne room of grace and we have to lift our hands to the heavens and we have to say, for the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. If, 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 if Satan can steal your song, then Satan is going to steal your victory. I'm going to show you in the Bible right now, Israel, when they lost their song, and they hung up their harps, and they stopped their melody. They stayed in the place of captivity. We need to sing about the future while we're hurting about the past. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 11, the Bible, 10 and 11 Bible says, um, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Jeremiah 33, verse 30, God says, call on me and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Oh, I want, to, I want to tell you that God still promises you a beautiful future. You may have been retrenched, but God says, I've not abandoned you. You are on my mind. I have a future for you. Stop talking about your negativities and begin to praise me. Praise me for a better future. Change the song in your heart. So when Israel was taken to captivity, specifically the Jews who lived in Jerusalem from Babylon, Daniel being one of them, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, 16 years old, is trafficked to Babylon as a slave. And there he spends the next 70 years of his life in a foreign culture. And if you come to the evening meetings, you will see how this incredible, incredible Daniel rises above all the odds, all the injustice, all the institutional injustice, all the racial injustice, all the prejudice, everything that is against him. I mean, he's a slave boy, and he becomes second in charge in Babylon, second to Nebuchadnezzar. And we talk about that in the evenings. If you don't come in the evenings, watch on a live stream, or get thyself in church twice on a Sunday, okay? This is the safest place to be. We're not afraid. We're not stupid. But we are in a safe place today in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. Come on, let's just give the Lord a praise, because it's good to give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I was sitting in a restaurant the other day, and the, the person, um, he says, Pastor, how's church going? Are you opening your church? As I said, well, I can't say. <laughs> he said, I don't know why everybody talks about the church as a super spreader, because you have to come, yeah, uh, uh, mainland Maine. He says, nobody wears masks. There's parties here all the time. Some of you were last night. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he says, there's no social distancing. He says, wherever alcohol is being served, there's no social distancing. And, and yet people worry about the church, where the only wine we serve is the Holy Ghost wine. It's a better wine. It's divine. It will cause you to shine. Amen. And you will even rhyme. 
Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to cause you to be better. It's going to cause you to be inspired. Remember, Satan will try and take everything out of your life that will get you to a better place. Now, I don't criticize those of you that are watching me on television, but thy are going to have to get thy blessed assurance <laughs> back to your church. Amen. I'm not criticizing you. But don't do this thing with me. I'm afraid to go to church. I mean, we, this building is safer than any building anywhere. And so is Johannesburg and Bloomington, etc. We spray, sanitize. We have special stuff, blah, blah, blah. We meet everybody's temperature, blah, 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 blah. We do everything scientifically possible. Plus, we have G O D and the Holy Spirit. Um, Before you're going to recover anything else, you're going to recover yourself spiritually, and you're not going to do it by yourself sitting in front of your television set. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. One of the greatest enemies of progress is comfort. Comfort. We don't want this COVID to make Christians comfortable to rather sit in front of their television sets because it's comfortable. There's no blessing in comfort. There's blessing in sacrifice when you say, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now understand, if you can't get thy blessed assurance into the house of God, but if, they, if, if thou canst, you see I'm even talking very polite, if thou canst get thyself to a sanctuary, the next Sundayest preparest thyself and thine children <laughs> and get thyself back into the presence of God because you'll walk into the presence of God the corporate anointing and I want to tell you every devil of hell every tormenting demon every depression is going to fall off of you because the yoke shall destroy the anointing in the name of Jesus there is no substitute for the anointed presence of the Holy Ghost, for the fire of the Holy Ghost, and more than ever, we need a baptism of fire. We need the Holy Ghost to fall upon the church before we can even think that anything is going to change in the world. Oh, come on, stand up on your seat. Stand on your seat. Stand in front of your home tonight or oh, this morning. Lift your hands and just shout, fire fire and watch the fire hit your neighbor above you and your neighbor below you shout fire in the name of Jesus say father I'm hungry for the fire of God and give the Lord a radical praise where you are come on hallelujah oh come on church we need to praise God like never we need to rejoice in the Lord like never. We need to offer our worship to God like never. We have promises. No matter what the giants say, no matter what the enemy plans, we have a higher calling. We serve the creator of heavens and earth. And when praise will go up, heaven will come down. And we will close 2020 with heaven on earth. In the name of Jesus, shout amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I mean, this Christian thing is not meant to be done by yourself. You won't find it anywhere in the Bible. Our Father. Only 120 that came to church, the Holy Ghost fell on them. The 380 that sat at home got nothing. You say, Pastor, in my face. No, I'm in your face because I love you. Get yourself back. Except if you have the sniffles. If you have the sniffles, stay away. So Israel is in captivity. The whole world has been in lockdown. And one of the greatest things that have been stolen from the church is the sound of praise, corporate praise. It's when the church comes together that, that, that the heavens shake. Satan knows it. He's trying to sound or, or, or to steal the sound that can only come from the church, which is Zion. So the first thing when, when you go through hell is you, you, you don't feel like worshiping. And I'll talk about that in a moment because I understand that. When my brother suffered from cancer for 25, 20 months, 
I tell you one thing, sometimes I could only worship God with a tear or two. I didn't feel like jumping up and down. We're not talking about always jumping up and down. But sometimes we don't have to ask God why. We can just ask God how. We can just ask God, how can I go through this? We can just make up our minds. We're going to worship God. When we understand nothing, God, we are going to trust you. When life knocks us to the ground like Job and people mock us and people say, where is your song? Like Job, we will say, though he smite me, yet will I trust him and I will worship, worship him in times of uncertainty. Listen, the greatest worship you can give God sometimes is when you are hurting the most. The greatest worship you can give God sometimes is with the tears that run down your cheeks in the name of Jesus. Not even asking God, why God, why, why, why? But saying, God, I don't understand this, but I know that you are faithful. I know that you are merciful. And one day, God, when everything that is perfect has come, I will have all the answers. But right now, Father, I'm just going to trust you like Job. I'm going to worship you, Father, even if there's not a sound of joy. I'm never going to lose my heart of worship. I'm never going to lose my trust towards you, God, because you are good and you are merciful. And I know, Father, you are in control. Even if I only have one meal a day, I'm going to gather my children and we are going to raise our hands to the heavens and we are going to worship you. We are going to give you a sacrifice of worship. We are not going to allow the devil to steal our praise and our worship. We are not going to allow ourselves to become silent because when we are in the grave, we cannot praise God. But while I have breath, I will praise you, Father, for you are good and your mercy unto us forever. I may not understand, Father, but I know that you are good and your mercy unto us forever. And I know, Father, you make a way where there seems to be no way. I know you sustain me in the fire. I know, Father, when I am weak, then I am strong because your grace is sufficient for me. I know, God, you will not allow me to be tempted above what I can endure. God, you are with me every step of the way. And with every temptation, trial and tribulation, you will make a way so that I can bear it. Therefore, I choose to lift my hands to the hills. I lift my eyes to the hills. And I say, from whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I will praise you. I will worship you. I will glorify you because you are God and there is no other. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. Nobody will steal the sound of praise and rejoice. Come on, CRC across South Africa, Christian on One Gospel on TBN. I know some of you are hurting this morning, but you better go beyond your hurt and you better sing a song of deliverance and you better worship the God who is alive, ready to pick you up, ready to turn things around, ready to give you beautiful ashes. He's not a God about to abandon you. You are on His mind. Therefore, you need to sing a new song for a new day. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, give the Lord a praise. Come on, give Him a bit of a praise. Hallelujah. By the rivers of Babylon. I think it was Boney M who sang it. Everybody thought it's a great song. It wasn't a great song. It's a song of discouragement, song of hopelessness. It's the song that Israel sang in Babylonian captivity. By the rivers of Babylon where we sat down in the place of captivity, no longer standing, but sitting in the place of despair, despondency, discouragement. Psalm 137 verse 1, by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down. Yes. We wept. I think God doesn't understand your pain. Job loss. Career loss. For men who can't provide for their families. A loved one suddenly snatched away. You think God doesn't understand? That's why we have the Bible, so we can see ourselves in the Bible. Job, in one day, loses everything. Life is real, man. I said to somebody in gym this week, being many Christians want to make Christ, this Christian journey just this little perfect journey that nothing ever goes wrong. I said, nothing is further from the truth. 
You need faith because of the trials and tribulations and the sufferings you will face as a human being. That's why you need your faith. Faith that is more precious than gold. Faith that is refined in the fire of trial, test and tribulation. Faith that causes you to worship like Abraham. After a 25 year delay, I waited and waited and waited and waited some more. Crying out for God's deliverance. This is real, man. These are not fairy stories we preach on a Sunday. This is life. Sometimes life can knock you, can knock the wind out of your sails. Sometimes disappointment can be so bad. I had in one day or one and a half days, five people crying out just on my social media, wanting to commit suicide, all of them women. Breaks my heart to hear what's happening in our world. And the government still thinks about a lockdown. Some of our women pastors, they have to counsel women every day that walk into our offices black and blue, beaten up by their husbands, by their lovers. Still happening. While the government talks about a program. We need more than a program. We need a revival. We need a God intervention. We need a move of the Holy Ghost. We need God to arrest these men. We need God to arrest these criminals. We need God to save these murderers. We need God to do what no man can do. Oh, come on, shout amen in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is not going to happen while we talk about the giants in our land. We have to put our focus on God and begin to glorify God and cry out to God and worship God and sing about the mercy of God and the goodness of God and the move of God and cry out for revival and praise God for the answer before the answer and not be taken up in the moment the issues of the day and voice our anger and our frustration and our hurts and our bitterness and add to the cesspool of hurt and destruction and division but be a voice of God in the world by putting the praises of God on your mouth can I have an amen in Jesus name so so these Jews are sitting in Babylon which is a huge foreign culture I say this to people all the time and they look at me like this, especially young people, and I say, you're going to face uh, unfairness. You're going to face institutional racism. You're going to face um, color-based policies, etc., 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 etc. I don't care what your skin pigmentation is. Everybody's going to be mistreated. Three of you believe it. Somewhere life will throw you a curveball that you did not expect. I'm not prophesying doom over you. <laughs> doom. Some pastors actually prophesy doom. Amen. <laughs> what was that? It's like, okay, we killed that cat. Amen. <laughs> Slaughtered that sacred cow. <laughs> I see your faith. Have some doom. Open your mouth. My word. Prophets of doom, literally. Okay. They're living up to their names. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word thank God that this COVID has exposed so many of these false people and uh, and many of them will be no more without Christians having to do anything I have to close by the rivers of Babylon whatever your Babylon Babylon represents place that you're in exile, captivity, maybe gone through a divorce, maybe caught up in a bad situation, maybe something you're going through emotionally, nobody knows about it. It's a place of captivity. And when people are in captivity, they quickly forget about Zion, which in the Old Testament is, is the promise of God's permanent dwelling place, Zion, Zion in the New Testament is the church. So that's why every king, every prophet, the desire was for the temple, which would be the Zion, the place where God dwells in, in the old covenant. So there we sat down. Yes, we wept when we remembered Zion. When we remembered what can be, what has been promised. What I had. It's not a great thing to lose something. 
you lose a child. You have a great marriage, you lose your marriage. You lose a business. Suddenly you lose your sanity. It happens to people. No rhyme or reason. I was watching a, a video, a friend of mine that I've been wanting to invite to South Africa for a long time. I served with him on the Global Kingdomship Partner Network work, which is 100 elected pastors from all over the world. Um, huge churches. I feel like a home cell when I'm among these people. He's a huge businessman in this particular country. His family runs the biggest business. He also has the biggest church. And his daughter got raped. His daughter. I mean, he's got every kind of protection, faith, prayer, everything. And he said, it's the worst thing that ever happened. And he was crying. He says, not one day, not two days, not three months, but for a year. He was just weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping with this unanswered question, why? Until he stood before the presence of God one day and God said to him, don't ask why. Ask who. And get your eyes back to me like Job. And he says everything changed. He says the scar is still there, but suddenly his worship changed. And he said, the only worship I could give God was my, was my tears. It was just, I was weeping before God, but it was a weep that wasn't a hopeless weep. It was a weep that was crying out to God saying, Father, I am still going to trust you. You know, I have two daughters and you've heard what I've said from this platform. But you know, when you're in that moment, the grace of God is upon you in a different way. And we have to turn to God. In our lowest moments, we have to turn to God. Otherwise, we will never find healing. And the sound that comes from us is not a worship sound. It's not a sound of pure pureness. It's a sound of bitterness. And there are so many people that the only thing that comes out of them is a distorted sound of offense. It's a sound of bitterness. It's a sound of regret. It's a sound of remorse. That has to change, my brother and my sister. We cannot change yesterday. We have to get back, not to the rivers of Babylon, but to the rivers of God, the rivers that flow from the sanctuary. And we have to eat from the healing leaves of the branches of Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And we have to allow Jesus come on to heal our broken hearts as He said He will come. We, oh, come on. We have to allow Jesus to remove our captivity. We have to find our peace again in the presence of God. We have to take our hearts off the willows. We know what a willow is. A willow is a weeping tree. That's where Israel hung their harps. The Bible says, they, it says, when we remembered Zion's, we hung up our harps upon the willows that's what people do they hung, hang up their harp they hang out on, on the willow the moment where they got hurt so bad, bad where they were disappointed so bad and that becomes the defining moment in their life every time they talk that sounds come through from them we have to take our harps off the weeping willows the things in our lives that caused us to weep and the things that are still causing us to weep, the injustices that we have been through, we have to take those harps off and we have to put those harps before the presence of God and we have to get a new song and a new sound from our hearts if we want to see a new day. Listen to me. A new song for a new day. No more sighing. No more mourning. No more uh, 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 sackcloth and ashes. We have to believe God to give us beauty for ashes. Oh, come on. Somebody say amen and make a sound unto God. Even if it's a weeping sound this morning, a sound of desperation, a cry from your heart, whatever it is this morning, God is hearing your cry in the name of Jesus. And God is there to heal you. And God is there to deliver you. And God is there to lift you up. And God is there to bless you, to give you a new sound for a new day. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I have to close. It says we hung up our hearts up upon the willows in the midst of our captivity. Because that's what we do. We get cynical. We've waited and waited and waited some more. Then what happens, verse 3, those who carried us away into captivity, the devil, the oppressor, asked us, asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, 
Sing us one of the songs of Zion. What happens? Now the enemy mocks you. The enemy has you in depression. The enemy has stolen your joy. And you're in a place of mourning. And we know that the Bible says Jesus came. I'm not going to get there this morning in Isaiah chapter 61. To comfort those who mourn in Zion. To clothe you with a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That Jesus came to change you, to heal you, so that you can sing a new song. The promise of God comes to them in Isaiah 35 verse 10. He says, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. You walk to your future with singing. With everlasting joy on their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. God says, I will bring you back to Zion. God says, I will restore the years that the locusts have stolen from you. God says, I will cause you to recover. God says, I will not disappoint you. I will not fail you. God says, I will remove your sorrow and your, and your sighing. God says, I will bring you out of your captivity, Babylon, and I will bring you, oh, come on, I will bring you back to Zion in the name of Jesus Christ. That's a word for somebody. That devil is going to be broken over off of you today. That despondency, that discouragement is going to be broken off of you. God says, I will fill your heart again with a song of deliverance, with a song of joy, with a song of gladness, with a song of happiness. You will sing again. You will dance again. Yes, by the very rivers of your captivity. God says, I will anoint your head with fresh oil. God says, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And people will talk about my miracles because I'm the God of a turnaround. I'm the God of a new thing. I'm a God of deliverance. Oh, come on. Somebody that is sitting by a river of Babylon this morning, get up off your feet and give the Lord a sacrifice of praise. Even if it's a worship of tears, you give God a sound so God can get take a hold with you and change that sound in your heart this morning. A new song for a new day. A new sound for a new day. Hallelujah. 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 Never easy to sing a song of praise when you're in captivity. But that's what the Holy Spirit will help you do. Prophet Habakkuk says in Habakkuk 3 verse 17, Though the fig tree may not blossom, no fruit be on the vines. Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no fall, food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet. He will make me walk the high hills again. So choose this morning to sing a song of deliverance even while you're in captivity. Sing a song of joy while you are waiting for your deliverance. Sing a song of praise when you are burdened by depression. Sing a song of worship whilst you are hurting and broken inside. Even if the only sound is a weep, but no longer a weep of despondency, but a weeping of hope, a weeping that knows I'm hurting God, but I'm trusting you for your deliverance. I trust you. I don't know what you are going through. But I know there's one person that can change the sound within. Oh, we can have everybody else um, talk to us, etc. But there's nobody like Jesus, Isaiah chapter 60. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because I've been anointed to do this and this and this and this. We're going to talk about that next week. That only Jesus can do. No political activist, no social justice activist. Although things have to be reformed. We'll look at that in the Bible. That justice is a command of God. But not your justice. God's justice. God's kingdom justice. I'm studying very interesting um, topics from the Bible. And one question I am going to address, and it's going to shock the hell out of many of you, is was Jesus a socialist? What was Jesus' political outlook? 
So we're going to talk about it. Was he a capitalist? Was he a Marxist? No. Because Marxism says there's no God. <laughs> Was he a socialist? <laughs> So while we're grasping around for all these answers, looking for truth in political leaders, and yes, we need politicians, and yes, we need to engage in politics wherever we can, in forums, and we'll talk about that in the new year, how to influence the culture of cities, etc., how to engage where we can, to change our cities, not to allow other people to decide on our behalf, but get Christians activated to be the salt and the light. But the only one who can change the sound in your heart is God. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. No one moving. One Gospel TV in here. Yeah. Bloemfontein, Pretoria, Johannesburg. Wherever you're watching from. Beautiful Valcom, Tabanshu. Places all over the world. There's one person who can heal the weep in your heart. And that's Jesus. There's one who can give you peace with God. His name is Jesus. There's no one else who can do that. So you're sitting there this morning, you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus. I have no relationship with Jesus. Maybe you walked away from God, you've been disillusioned. I don't know. But this morning is one prayer away. Right where you are, every head bowed, every eye closed. In this place this morning, wherever you are, you say, Pastor, I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. If that's the desire of your heart, quietly, wherever you are, just raise your hand up quickly. Slip it up quickly. Quick, 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 quick. Raise it up. Say yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Raise it up. I'm not going to say too many thank yous. God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hand on your heart if you've raised your hand and you want to pray this prayer. Say this right now. God's right there. Say, Lord Jesus, I give myself back to you. I open my heart and I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. Please forgive my sin. I believe you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Today, I turn to you, and I put my life in your hands. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for giving me a new life and a new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please write us. There's an address on the television. Write us. We want to connect with you. Come on, let's give these people all a big praise. The angels in heaven rejoice. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Don't forget the leaders meeting, please. Uh, I'm personally doing the leaders meeting with all leaders. And anybody that wants to be involved, um, we are not going to allow Satan to dictate the terms of God's kingdom. We respect, we honor, we are wise, we social distance, we sanitize, we wear masks, we take responsibility for our personal health, but the reality is people without Jesus still go to hell. No scientist will tell you that. It's not their job. Their job is to advise the government then the government has to make decisions. So we have to talk about the future. We have to talk about God's kingdom. Can I have an amen? Intelligently, biblically, in accordance with um, um, safety. But there's no way in the world that I'm sitting in a lockdown for another year. It's not happening. It's not happening. It absolutely is not going to happen. We've been more compliant than anybody else. But yes, the reality. For us as pastors, we don't just stand on platforms like this. This is, you know, people think this is what I do. Half the time I get on here, I'm very tired because of everything we've had to do during the week. You all want me to look like a fresh daisy. Maybe if it was one of those pastors that just sit and, and, and in my little vacuum, I could get up here with and glow like um, 
a bulb in the evening, okay? But the reality is we're working very hard on very many issues that requires a lot of attention, energy, and pressure. And I cannot see how Christians can still think church is about just a building sitting on a Sunday and say, every pastor, goeie preek pastor, drie uit drie, laat ek myself nie beledig nie, ek kan met iemand anders gaan sê drie uit tien. <laughs> you know, Paul writes about everything he goes through. Somebody wrote me the other day and she said, oh, pastor, I follow you and I see you look very tired. I say, I am tired, that's reality, but go look at Paul. Paul says um, in his whole list, he says, in weariness often, in tiredness, because we're not just those pastors that sit and glow, like just glow Monday, glow Wednesday, glow Tuesday, glow Thursday, just sit and just glow. No, we, we have to deal with real issues, real issues, issues that affect everybody. And that's not politics, that's reality. We can pray, but if we don't engage, we're doing nothing. We are the leaven. We are the salt. We are the light. So if we don't engage people privately, we don't post on social media when we meet influential people, because it's nobody's business. But if we don't influence the decision makers, you will all be on the wrong side of those people's decisions. I say to the young people, we have to be people who understand the time that we're in and, and the role of the church in this time. We're not just here to sing Kumbaya, and we're not just here to spend a whole hour where I call out one of you and prophesy to you because we've investigated you for three months, so I have all the information on you. And you're all impressed. I don't have to walk on air. People are hurting. I said people are hurting. And this, the, the recovery in the future of South Africa is not just going to be, and I, and I know people because I talk to a lot of people, you already planning to move your business out of South Africa and all these kind of things. Or to move your children out of South Africa. I spoke to someone that said, I just see no future. I'm going to do everything I can to get my children out of South Africa. I said respectfully, um, that's a problem because you're never going to be part of the solution. Because while there's a back door, you are not going to do your part to help everybody recover. So we need to find those who are committed to rebuild South Africa. Amen. Committed. Committed. Not just to look after their family, the three white children but to look after the people of South Africa. And, and if you don't see Christianity like that, I would really like a serious, because um, uh, 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 some of you are so clever, but it's a theoretical cleverness that has no relevance. It's like somebody said to me, sarcastically, well, we don't just give people food, we teach people to fish. I say, looka, looka, and if there's no dam, And if there's no fish in the dam, that theory just doesn't fly. We sit with 70, 80% educated young people with degrees who can't find jobs. So don't tell me, we teach people to fish. And you have 7 million AIDS orphans or orphans in South Africa and 30-something percent unemployed and 50% people that live under the bread line and you come with that religious uh, a cliche. Well, we don't waste our time just giving food to people. Well, then Jesus wasted his time because he always gave to the poor. And Paul was instructed, always take care of the poor. And Jesus said, the poor you have with you always in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's not have that Christian snobbery in CRC or in our midst. Let's be part of the solution. And that's what I'm going to talk about on Tuesday. Part of the solution, proactive solutions this is not political. This is the world that we find ourselves in. Amen. I am apolitical. 
but we need to mobilize the church and we need to get the church to become the hands and the feet of Jesus in our community. And we have to bring healing to the people who are suffering in our community. No child asked to be born in poverty. No child. There are children. You see, the information I have and you have are two different things. Some of us have not been affected by this COVID. You've had enough investments. You're not a hurting. You don't have pain. So it's very easy to make random statements out of context. But when you get out of your world, and I want to say little world, because you'll feel insulted if I say it, and I don't want to insult you. So let me say it like this. Get out of your little world, your puny world, and get into the world where everybody is actually living, desperate, without good people that never asked for it. I don't see any Christianity without serious social responsibility. Doesn't make Jesus a socialist. He was not a socialist. I'll prove it to you from the Bible. He's 100% not a socialist. But he totally demands that his subjects take full responsibility of social challenges and ills in their world. Not by burning tires and burning buildings. But by addressing those things in a righteous way. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. And we sit with masses of young people in this country that are not being led. Because they don't know. So we can address these things. And that's the future. Future is not just to bring you to church and get you to hop, skip and jump for three hours. Or for an hour. Where people of purpose. We were born for this hour. And we have to slay every giant in South Africa so that your children and your grandchildren and your children's children can live in a blessed, prosperous South Africa of milk and honey. Oh, come on, if you believe it, one more time, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. So we're going to need everybody on board, every doctor, every lawyer, every woman, every man, every child. We are going to change our world by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. My time is up. Now, I know you're very excited to give an offering because we never come empty-handed. While we listen to an anointed item, shout out to the saxophonist and uh, the keyboard player and the band, all of them, and they released a brilliant song this week. And you may come to church twice on a Sunday. It's not a sin, okay?
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you Rieban Muldi and the CRC Orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, you can hear here as you hear here, the Aso for you, Sokki Sokki Musik. You are welcome, we sing for you, the Aso in your skier, for the trouwe. Amen. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion, the fellowship, the guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you every moment, every day. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the one Jesus promised to be your comforter. Okay. Walk with him and he will show you all things. And he will even point out the people in your world that he wants you to reach and uplift. We are his hand. The Bible says he who waters others are watered himself. Himself. As we hurt, we help others hurting. The very comfort we receive from God, we comfort others. Let's live wide-eyed, open-eyed, our eyes upon Jesus, looking unto Him, but then looking with the eyes of Jesus to those in our world. We are the hope of the world. God loves you. Thank you for your commitment to Him. Remember when you stand for Him, he will always stand for you. And his eyes are upon the righteous. His ears are open to your prayers. He has not abandoned you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He promised his very disciples. He said, lo, I am with you to the end of time. And wherever they went, the Lord worked with them. God is with you to keep you, to protect you, to guide you, to favor you. He is your portion and the length of your days. I speak the grace, the peace, the mercy, and the favor of God through our Lord Jesus Christ upon you, your offspring, and your entire family. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Much love to all of you. Big hug to all of you. We love you. I love you. Thank you for being here. Let's make the world a better place, please. Leave safely. Let's keep our rules. Social distancing, please. As I believe. As I believe. Let's do things correctly. God bless you.